everybody, it's time for my final thoughts on sand art. But before we get to that, please remember that this was a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, here's what I think. Kimberly here, and I've got some strong takeaways for you about sand art. This is a game for two to four players and takes about 25 to 45 minutes to play, depending on the amount of players. Now in this game, players are going to take turns either gaining sand, mixing sand, pouring sand, or shaking it up. Those are the four different actions that you're going to see on these cards that are laid out in the center of the table. And this is actually the really cool thing about this game. It's honestly that action selection. So these table cards are spread out in a line and they have a top and they have a bottom. And each of these cards have those four actions on them in some variation. So when you shuffle up these cards and lay them out, it's going to change where all the different actions are every single time you play. And you're going to be moving around the board with this hand. And the reason this hand is so chonky and has a thumb on one side is because you're always moving in the direction of your thumb. So what you do is you start on the far side on one of the layer cards. There are um, advanced, like good, cool layer cards that give you five victory points and then maybe easier layer cards that give you two or three. You start on those sides and then you will just move in the direction to the action space you want. And like I said, there are two um, halves to it. So you can go to the top space or the bottom space as long as it's unoccupied. And then you do one of those actions in that space. Some spaces have multiple actions, but you can only do one. And then when you move that direction, before you end your, your uh, movement, you flip your hand over and now you're facing the other direction. So as you move around, you're moving this hand and you're kind of finding the card you want in the line, but you can only go in the direction of your thumb. And you can only go on the top or bottom as long as it's unoccupied. So there's a lot of planning and a lot of strategizing. And I think it's so replayable because of that action selection. And you see what other people are doing and you're anticipating because you see they have everything's open information the cards they have that they're going for, all of the public objectives are obviously public, and so is everyone's sand jar. So you're, you're filling your sand jar with all these different color sand, your color pencils in this game. So when you gain sand, you're going to go to the location that shows a scoop, and you're gonna say, ah, I got five yellow sand. And then you're gonna mark it in your little jars on the side. This is where you keep all of your sand. This is your resource collection. And then you might move to a space where you will mix sand. Oh, now I've got blue and I've got yellow. I'm going to mix my blue and yellow to make green sand. So that's what you're gonna do. So you scoop sand and once you get all the primary colors, you might wanna start mixing for secondary colors because there are reasons for that. There are different goals out there. And then you're gonna pour sand. Pouring sand is putting sand from your baby jars into your big, beautiful, creative, unique jar of sand. And pouring sand is just like in gravity rules. So you're gonna pour sand and it has to go to the bottom and you can essentially build things as long as there's a base underneath it. So you can't like put sand over nothing. That doesn't make any sense. And when you pour sand, it's one color and it must be connected. So I can't put a little sand of green over here and a little sand of green separate over here in this space. It has to all be poured at once and in one a contiguous collection. That's cool. So that's what you're doing in the game. Gaining sand, mixing sand, pouring sand. Now, there are color objectives and there are all six of the color cards, but you only pick two. And the primary cards are worth three points at the end of the game. If you have the most spaces, they're, they're, they're counted by dots inside of these uh, spaces on your jar you're gonna get three points if you have the most blue. And then the other card I drew for the run through was purple. And since it's one of those secondary colors, if you have the most of those dots, you're gonna get six points. So there are two color objectives and then there are design or pattern objectives. And these are so cool. They are really interesting, super unique, um, thematically fun. This is the hourglass. Uh, and it requires green. And then if you do this design as many times as you want in your jar, as long as it's a distinct design, you get 10 points. There's the rainbow, there's the fish, there's all kinds of things, but you pick three. And that's it, you just pick three of those pattern objectives. Everybody can score those. 
one person can get the first finished. So if you finish your jar and you put your cork in the top, then you're going to trigger the end of the game for everybody. Everyone gets equal turns, and then you're going to score up your jar. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about, which is, again, a really, really cool feature of this game, is that you have the choice as you fill your sand jar to gain victory points or bonuses. And bonuses help you throughout the entire game. So you're kind of like, do I trade? Oh, what, what's the trade off here? Do I get an extra scoop uh, of sand every time I gain sand? Or do I get four victory points? Four victory points is almost the one of one layer card by getting the layers matching on the side of my jar. Can I get red, green, and yellow on the edge of my jar showing? Can I do that a couple times? Maybe I can score my layer card a couple times. So that's really cool. Do I want to get any of these other special abilities? So as you fill your jar, you're going to get an opportunity to choose between victory points or bonuses. And I like that because every every player does a different thing. They have different goals. They have a different idea of how they're going to essentially achieve the, the, the highest victory point score total. So that is going to be the game. Now, when you when you do a player turn order, um, you simply go player one, player two, player three, and then you pass this. So the player who goes first every round will be last in the next round when you pass it to the left. And then that player is going to go and it's going to come back to you and then you pass it again. So I think that's interesting too because it doesn't just go around the table. It doesn't do it that way. It changes it. It changes it up just enough that your hands start getting in the way. You start really feeling maybe blocked by what people you know want to do and where they're going and where you need to go to mobilize. There is a ton of fun here and a lot of replayability. I will say two two notes that I want to tell you about um, the paper that you get. Um, does not, it needs a hard surface. I have to say, you have to make sure you have a really hard surface. So any kind of soft player mat or like top to a game table is not going to be conducive to playing with these uh, sheets of paper. Um, they're relatively thin, they're beautiful, but they're not going to stand up to it. Your, your pencil will just poke right straight through it, or it'll be so faint that you can't actually see what the color is. So that's going to be one thing. And then the second thing is, the yellow is really, really hard to see. Every time I played, it's just really hard to see your yellow. So make sure you just, just you know, get, get into it. I mean, I don't know, but usually it was like the glare of the light from, you know, the, the, the lights overhead, but it made it really tough to see with yellow. And I think that's just with colored pencils. I recently played um, Sagrada Artisan, the um, uh, the, the campaign, like the, the legacy game. And the colored pencils were my my biggest critique of the game, and I find that it's just I think it's just color pencils in general can sometimes be a little bit of a booger, um, but not so much that I think that it 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 does anything. It just you need to be ready that yellow is hard to see, um, and you just have to press hard. That's all. Um, nice fun game. I think there's just enough choice. There's just enough conflict with that action selection of having to move uh, across this linear action card track. Um, and I love the different designs. You're, you're not going to play a game with the same designs uh, every single time. They are just adorable and fun to go for. And I think they're uh, really, really well balanced. So just a ton to love here. And with sand art, the weight of the game and the majority of the box is filled with this massive player sheet because that's where the game is, is in the amount of plays that you're gonna get in. And with this being a half hour game, love it. Do love it. Now this is a two to four player game, so there isn't a solo variant. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna come up with one in the future. But the whole point of the game here is that kind of conflict. And when you're playing with two players, you have a set number of cards. When you add three, you add one more card to the lineup. And when you play with four, you add two more cards to the lineup to give just a little bit more space for players to kind of fight. But the more players you have, the more block spaces there are for uh, other players. So this is Sand Art. Great theme, lovely use of colors. Nice abstract game, but I think the coolest feature of this game is that action selection on your turn. 
either choosing the top part of the card or the bottom part of the card and moving in the direction of your thumb, flipping it over, knowing that you have to position yourself for your next turn going the other direction. So just a lot, a lot of really cool moments in the game. And I love the choice of all those bonuses too. I think it's fantastic. So that's going to be it for me with Sand Art and I will see you later, folks. Bye.